This week on Cracked Science, stem cells are magic until they blind you. Hey, this is Jonathan Jerry, and you're watching Cracked Science, the show from the McGill Office for Science and Society that separates sense from nonsense on the scientific stage. Imagine the following scenario. You have really bad joint pain and you need a solution. I point to the street outside your window and tell you that all you need to do is walk up to the RV that's parked there and get in. Inside, there's a guy who's not a medical doctor, and he'll take some fat from you and inject it back into your joints, and you'll be healed. You would dismiss me as a lunatic and might even finally get to use that laser-sided pepper spray your daughter bought you for your birthday, and I can see why. But if this scenario is propped up by the right kind of hype, you might just run toward that RV instead of away from it, which is why we need to talk about stem cells. Stem cell treatments used to be rare in North America, so rare, in fact, that we frequently spoke about stem cell tourism, the idea that patients with seemingly incurable diseases had to travel to exotic locations to gain access to stem cell solutions. Nowadays, the exotic locations might as well be a commercial building in Toronto or a mini mall in Miami. There are 43 clinics in Canada offering stem cell treatments. There are 16 in the United Kingdom, 70 in Australia, and 88 in Japan. In the U.S., you can see how quickly these clinics have sprung up over the past few years to reach a total of 570 in 2016. And these numbers keep going up. And if you have any kind of disease or permanent injury, you may be interested in visiting one of these clinics because of what you've heard about stem cells. If there is one word that summarizes what stem cells represent, it's potential. Our cells are, in one sense, miniature versions of ourselves and that as they grow older, they specialize. This baby eventually became an education delivery manager. That baby grew up to be a low vision researcher. And this baby, well, we don't talk about this baby. Actually, we talk a lot about this baby. And some babies and some stem cells have more potential than others. Little Lenny da Vinci here had the potential to become a painter, an engineer, a botanist, and an anatomist. Whereas Baby Homer had, well, much less potential. Stem cell therapies hold the promise of using baby da Vinci's and baby Einstein's and injecting them into the right part of your body so that they can live up to their potential and become heart cells or muscle cells or brain cells or eye cells and thus restore the function that had been lost through disease or injury. And I think that's very promising. These adult stem cells can naturally be found in many parts of our body, the bone marrow, the blood, muscles, skin, liver. So they are seemingly everywhere and have the potential to heal anything. They're like love in biological form. Now, because of this potential, there are conspiracy theories out there that the Food and Drug Administration, the pharmaceutical industry, and some academics are plotting to keep life-altering stem cell treatments away from patients, a sort of skull and bone marrow secret society, if you will. But the reality is actually the opposite. A clinical trial using cardiac stem cells was very recently halted after Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital recommended that 31, I repeat, 31 scientific papers from the group running the trial and on the results of which this trial was built be retracted. A call to retract 31 papers. That's like two Brian Wansinks. Cutting corners in order to rush a treatment to the clinic is not unheard of. So just so we're on the same page, here is the only approved medical use for stem cells I could find. And boy, was it hard to figure this out, by the way. Restoration of the bone marrow because of cancer or other blood immune disorder by using stem cells collected from the blood, umbilical cord stem cells, or a bone marrow transplantation. Which means that injecting stem cells into your penis to increase its girth is definitely not an FDA approved procedure. And beyond these approved uses, there are rigorous, legitimate clinical trials taking place to see if findings in animal models can be reproduced in humans. And one of the signs of a legitimate trial is that you generally don't have to pay for the procedure. But the clinics I showed you earlier, the 43 Canadian clinics and the 570 American ones, they are not using stem cells in this context. They are selling you stem cell treatments that have not been proven to work and this biological house of cards is built on a very shaky foundation, as pointed out in the New England Journal of Medicine. 
The assertion that stem cells are intrinsically able to sense the environment into which they are introduced and address whatever functions require replacement or repair, whether injured knee cartilage or neurologic deficit, is not based on scientific evidence. This is like unleashing baby da Vinci at a goop convention, hoping he'll live up to his potential and turn into a chakra specialist, but instead he starts building tanks and killing people. And sure enough, when Lee Turner and Paul Knopfler took the pulse of the stem cell industry in the United States in 2016, this is what they saw. Hundreds of clinics selling stem cell treatments for orthopedic issues, things like meniscus injuries and carpal tunnel syndrome. Over 150 clinics saying they can treat your pain with these cells, as well as dozens and dozens of businesses advertising these treatments for neurological issues, immune problems, and respiratory diseases. They even found nine clinics promoting stem cells for autism and for cerebral palsy. The most common procedure offered by these clinics involves liposuction. They will use a cannula to remove some fat from your body. They will separate the dormant stem cells from the fat itself. They will add a solution to stimulate the stem cells and re-inject them into your body, often via an intravenous drip. And it's not just medical doctors doing this. Physician assistants, integrative medicine proponents, and alternative healers are getting in on this quite lucrative business. But if you have looked into these treatments for personal reasons, you may be surprised when I tell you that there are risks involved. And I say surprised because the publicity around these procedures often looks like this. The stem cell treatment procedure is very easy, quick, painless, and most importantly, completely safe. The risks are often downplayed or never mentioned on the website of these clinics, and traditional media are frequently not helping. This is a piece run by a local ABC TV affiliate in the States, and it mentions stem cells for knee problems. The journalist interviews a patient and her doctor. At no point is there any mention of risks. And that's implicit hype, when media coverage simply fails to mention the risks and instead focuses solely on testimonials. The risks, however, are real, because when these treatments go wrong, they go really wrong. Three women were left blind after being injected in the eye with stem cells derived from their own fat. They had macular degeneration and were misled by this clinic in Florida into thinking stem cells could heal their vision. Jim Gass wanted to recover from a stroke, and he received numerous stem cell injections. He paid close to $300,000 in total, and what he was left with was a bloody, rapidly growing mass of tissue around his spine, and the cells making up this tissue were not his. You may be asking yourself, where is the FDA and Health Canada and other regulatory agencies in this whole mess? The answer is, we're not sure. While there is a will to crack down on these clinics and the claims they're making, and indeed the FDA has devoted a webpage to warning the public about this situation, legal action has been painfully slow. Once again, Turner and Knopfler looked into how many warning letters the FDA had sent to businesses advertising unapproved stem cell therapies. In 2009 and 2010, the answer was none. There was one in 2011, three in 2012, none in 2013 and 2014, one in 2015, none in 2016, and one in 2017. That's six letters from 2011 to August 2017. When you remember how fast this industry is growing, it's hard not to summarize the situation as thus. Meet me. And because these treatments aren't covered by health insurance, the businesses selling these shady procedures help their future customers raise the money for them. Here is one such company with a video and blog post showing their potential clients how to raise money through crowdfunding. Imagine if a Nigerian prince scammer sat next to you and gave you tips on raising the money he wants from you. Look, David, there are many ways to raise the money for this. Have you tried GoFund Yourself? Did you know that 15% of campaigns on GoFund Yourself reach their goal? Also, I don't want to be pushy, but second mortgage, huh? It's not just for people drowning in debt anymore. So aside from a few well-understood applications and a number of legitimate clinical trials, stem cell treatments are still relegated to biomedical research and to that very important word, potential. But because of the hype around them, the glorifying pieces in the media, the emotional testimonials, and the lack of a proper regulatory pushback, you may believe that their potential is actually reality. 
And you may not need much convincing to look outside your window, step out, and knock on the door of an RV where a guy who's not a medical doctor says he'll take some fat from you and inject it back into your joints to heal you. Timothy Caulfield coined a good term for this whole phenomenon, science ploitation, the exploitation of real, promising science to sell snake oil. And science is not the only thing being exploited here. If you want to cut through the hype regarding stem cells, I highly recommend Dr. Paul Knopfler's blog, The Niche, specifically one article called Patient's Guide to Treatments. In it, he reminds us that stem cells are a type of drug and that they have side effects, that celebrities should not be your guide to medical care, and that just because you see the words clinical trial doesn't mean it's a legit trial, even if it's listed on clinicaltrials.gov, which means, in the end, that you should really consult with your personal physician before reaching for the stem cells. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do click that button and ring that bell to get notifications. Don't forget to subscribe to our weekly newsletter by going to mcgill.ca slash OSS. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Cracked Science and join us next time for science that may or may not be all it's cracked up to be.